How we doing? How we doing? Yeah, yeah. Did you guys have a Did you guys have a good break three weeks ago? Did you have a good break? <laughs> um, I had a pretty average break. I had a pretty average break. My family though, they had a great break. My family went to Italy without me, <laughs> so they had a good time. Um, yeah, so they, they they went like the beginning of finals week, so I didn't get to go, um, and so I went home to an empty house. And so, like any you know, college student going home, realizing they're gonna have the house to themselves, you know, for several days. I, I was like, yeah, I'm getting home alone. I'm getting home alone right now. Um, and so, like knowing that, I, I figured I had to start, you know, living it out to the fullest. So I started preparing as if it was home alone and setting up like booby traps all over my house. And the problem was like it kind of backfired because instead of anyone trying to like break in, I just started forgetting where I'd set stuff up. <laughs> so I started like tripping them on accident, like. Uh, some of them were sort of innocuous and just kind of annoying. Like, um, there's like three pairs of my socks just stuck to the floor in various parts of my house. Uh, that's that's not on me. Um, but they also like some of them. It got dangerous like pretty fast. Like every time I went up the stairs, like I kept getting hit in the face with paint cans. <laughs> and like I guess I probably should have stopped filling them with change. That was probably a bad idea. <laughs> or like resetting them after I got hit by them. I don't know why. I kept doing that. Um, yeah, so um, then my, my, my family came back on uh, Christmas Eve, and uh, we were at my uh, grandparents' for Christmas. And Christmas is like a great time to learn the one thing that your extended family knows about you. <laughs> they know one thing, and if you, if you pay attention, you can figure that what that, what that is. And uh, I figured that out for my grandma this year. Um, so uh, one of the things she got me was this uh, hand soap that was scented for stress relief. And so I was like, okay, she thinks I like to be clean, or she thinks I don't wash my hands, either one's fine. Um, but then, another thing she got me was like this stress ball doll thing. And first of all, if you're going to get someone a stress ball as a gift, just go all the way and get, just get them a prescription for Xanax. Okay? That's what they need. That's what they need for getting them a stress ball. Just go all the way. And so, then I realized, okay, so that, that's the trend. Um, and then I go home. And I'm opening gifts with my um, immediate family, and my mom got me a weighted blanket <laughs> that she said was to relieve anxiety. <laughs> I was like, why is this my thing? Why is my thing being stressed? <laughs> and so uh, then I, was, I started getting stressed about like, how stressed everyone thought I was. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, i got to put these things to the test, right? I have all these things to reduce stress, now I'm stressed, let's put them to the test. And uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go take a relaxing hand wash right now. <laughs> and it up, and, uh, and uh, it turns out that when I went to wash my hands, I just electrocuted myself in the faucet. So I didn't really relieve my stress. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, so this, this break was um, the first time that a lot of my extended family learned that I'm doing comedy. And the thing is, all of them think that all my comedy is about them. But like, not in like a, oh, don't make comedy about me way. It's more in like a, uh, I bet it's all about me, isn't it, sort of way. Um, like my dad feels like that. Like my dad thinks I have at least like an hour, two hours of content just about him. Like, all we do is, you know, rewatch Transformers Revenge of the Fallen on TV when I'm home. So I don't know how you think that goes in a joke. <laughs> uh, ironically, it just did, but that's, that's all right. Um, another thing about Christmas that has nothing to do with my family, um, eggnog, I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> like, what is it? What is eggnog? And it's the thing is, here's the thing, it's not, it's not a, you don't know what it is, it's not a good, you don't know what it is. Like, that's Sunny D. Sunny D is a <laughs> Eggnog is a bad, you don't know what it is, because it has egg in the name. <laughs> like, it has to be bad. It has egg in the name. Um, yeah. I feel like I have a substantial boomer energy. Um, and don't worry, I talked to my grandpa, he said I could say that. So, I didn't clear. Um, yeah. That theory sort of started when I was a kid. My, my mom always used to tell me that I was an old man in a young man's body. She said that frequently. And, you know, that really made me feel a lot more, um, a lot, like, like it, it made me feel like I fit in a lot better with my peers. Like when I felt like I was an old person trapped in a young person. <laughs> And in, in her defense, in her defense, like, uh, I, she would usually say that after I finished asking her about how her 401k was doing. <laughs> so, I guess that's okay. Um, but yeah, like, my, my family, like, like, confuses me for an old person frequently for some reason. Um, like, I called home the other day, and uh, my sister picked up, and I said, hello. And she said, hi, Grandpa. 
<laughs> just with full confidence. Like, no, like, is this, hi, is this, is this Grample? It was just full confidence. And the thing is, like, I, uh, the thing that made me frustrated was that we have caller ID. <laughs> I don't know how she messed that one up. <laughs> yeah, so like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people just, just I, I just give off like, a, like an old person energy. Like, within five minutes of talking to me, I feel like a lot of people assume that I, you know, collect stamps and think that the Beatles ruined music. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so, so yeah. Let me, let me just, uh, let me just take a second here. I want, I want to prove to you that I feel like an old person, because first of all, like my body is failing me, and it always has been. Um, I have bad knees. Um, like, like the tendon in the front of my knee is apparently like the diva of my body. And so I that it wasn't going to grow at the same rate as the rest of my knee. It wanted to, you know, stand out. Um, I also have to pee all the time. That's an old person thing that I have. Um, and I'm a hypochondriac. So, like, I, I, I went to the doctor because, like, WebMD told me I had a UTI at one point. And, and uh, apparently the doctor also thought I was old. He, he diagnosed me not with a UTI, but with prostatitis. And then the next morning, the nurse, like, called our house and was like, yeah, I don't know what that guy was on because you can't get prostatitis under, like, 40. So, don't, don't take those antibiotics. So yeah, like somehow my prostate like tricked this doctor <laughs> that it was old. I don't know if it was like stacked on my bladder with like a, like a trench coat or something. I don't know what it did, but it did something. And like, it gave me a little bit of credibility as a hypochondriac though, because like, if my organs can deceive medical professionals, I don't see why I should trust them, right? <laughs> All right. So um, other things about my body. I'm like, I'm like bony and like not very muscular. Like a lot of people think that Captain America is hot. Not a lot of people feel the same about pre-Super Soldier Serum Steve Rogers. It's <laughs> kind of my body. So that's it. <laughs> like I feel like I feel like. Have you guys ever? Have you guys seen the video of Ruth Bader Ginsburg working out? <laughs> Uh, like I'm just like straining with like the, the little weights and uh, people aren't like disappointed. They're just surprised I got the weight to the bench in the first place. <laughs> they don't know how that happened. Yeah. There's a couple ways you can distinguish me from a boomer though. Um, one, I'm not racist. That's, like a, that's a pretty telltale sign. Another thing, like if you want to show me something, I don't tell you to move it away from me three times before I can see it. So that's another way you can tell. Another way is like I don't like confrontation, but like for boomers, that's like that's like the only thing that gets them excited. Like, <laughs> arguing with someone on the phone is the only thing that gets their heart rate above 45. <laughs> so they love it. Meanwhile, uh, I got an elevator the other day, and I needed to go to the fourth floor, and so I, I got on, and there was a girl next to the buttons already, so I asked her to hit the fifth floor button on on accident, and uh, I realized this when I when when she hit it, and I looked, she was already going to the fourth floor. So I had no opportunity to be like, oh, whoops, I'd like to go to the fourth floor instead. So I just had to sort of stand there awkwardly for four floors, wondering if I was going to be able to get off on the fourth floor or not. Uh, I, it turns out I decided I couldn't. Um, I also felt like I had made a commitment to the fifth floor. And, you know, I don't back out of commitments. Uh, my ex might disagree with you on that. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't back out. So I just kind of stood there while the, uh, like on the fourth floor, where I needed to be, I just stood there. I think it took about 10 minutes for the doors to close. Because uh, I didn't deserve the door close button. I didn't deserve that at that point. It was too late for me. Um, and so yeah, so I rode up to the fifth floor and then kind of like wandered the halls for a little bit so that I could go back down the stairs, hoping that I wouldn't see that girl in the hallway and she would think I was weird. So uh, thanks guys, you guys have been great.